All right, good morning everybody. Welcome to another round of coffee and questions. What's today's topic going to be? I'm going to let Charlie, my uh, little helper puppet, I'm going to let him read the question off of the forum, and I'll be right back. Hey, Handyman, here's a question off of the forum. You've done videos on how to make shelf brackets using railroad ties, but if I was to buy horseshoes from you or anywhere else, is there a way to use horseshoes to make shelf brackets? And can you describe how you did it? All right, I took the picture off of the web because I don't have one handy out in the shop. But this is the pattern that I used, I mean, a long time back when I started making them out of horseshoes. So what you want to start off with is, like I've always said, don't go to Home Depot, Lowe's, or the hardware store and buy steel. Go out to your steel supplier. You're going to get it a lot cheaper. And this is about what I used um, for the ones in the garage. It was either one or one and a quarter inch wide steel. It was probably about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit less in thickness. It doesn't have to be real thick. And you can bend these and make the L part of this just out of flat steel. If you had to, you could even, you know, weld it right there in the corner out of two pieces. But either way, you can create this L. Okay, then from there, you just set the horseshoes in in a pattern like this or similar to it, and you go ahead and you weld it up. Now, there's a couple of things that I do ahead of time here. The horseshoes, of course, I've cut the nails off of them. I use a four and a half inch angle grinder cutoff wheel. I cut the nails off. Okay. Then I have a wire wheel on a bench grinder and I go ahead and I clean them up fairly well. Okay. Because if you're also weld prepping it at the same time, really. And I clean them up real well. The ones here in the picture you're going to see are a little rusted. You can leave them that way if you want the rustic look, you know, when you're done. Um, a lot of times I don't. I spray them with textured paint because, like I said in my past videos, there's some really nice colors in textured paint nowadays. And that stuff's readily available at Lowe's, Home Depot, your hardware store, whatever. And it hides a lot of defects or it hides a lot of, you know, really funky stuff that's in these horseshoes sometimes. It makes them look really nice, I mean, when you're done. So that's another little tip. Anyway, I go ahead and I lay these patterns like this right here. And I like this pattern because you'll see here on the end where it's got like a hook. You can drape an extension cord. You can drape a tool over there. Um, I have one that sits out a little bit more than that. And I bent the horseshoe out just a little bit so I can set my four and a half inch angle grinder just right in the middle of that horseshoe. I can just hang it up there real quick. And I have one of those on the side of my welding cart. I'll probably make another one or two because I've got like uh, about four of these um, angle grinders and it's nice to be able just to quickly hang them on something and it's right there it's out of the way but it's easy to grab again so I'm sidetracking um, but these are very easy to make now do I sell these yes I've sold and I've shipped these because they're small enough um, like I've said before you can make money off of doing this um, they're small enough to you can put them in you know the USPS shipping boxes the flat rate and ship them so I mean let people know that you're doing them. Now, like I've always said, I create and keep photos on my phone. When I'm at work, I flip through them and somebody will say, hey, those are pretty cool. Can you just leave them rusted? Sure, I can leave them rusted. And I use Rust-Oleum 2 times Ultra Gloss Clear. You don't have to. There's plenty of other sprays out there. I just kind of favor that Rust-Oleum in particular. I've been using it for a while now. But I always spray them that way the rust and stuff doesn't come off on people's hands or anything like that. And it also kind of preserves that like antique rusty kind of a look. But these are fast. They're very easy to make. All you got to do for the little short pieces, if you take a horseshoe and you cut it in half, if you cut it dead center, you can then hold like half a horseshoe up and figure out what kind of an arc there you want. Like you see here towards the bottom or there in the middle. You can add more to this. You can add less. The design's yours. I mean, I, I told a friend of mine when I showed him the picture, and he's going to make them, and he's going to try to start selling them too. It's like a design opportunity. I mean, if you have a different way of doing it, um, drop it in the comment below. And then, you know, let me know what you think or what, what are your ideas. Now, I make these two ways. I make them like this. I've also done a past video where I've made them where I took a railroad tie and I bent it. You know, and you have to have a way to heat this steel up. Now, I use an oxyacetylene torch setup, and I bent them. These are easier to do if you don't have, you know, those kind of tools or a way to heat it up. If you don't have a forge, if you don't have oxyacetylene. 
And you don't have to worry about it with these. These are fast and they're easy to make. After you make one or two of these, I mean, you're whipping these things out, you know. And then I tell people, well, I sell them in pairs of twos. If you want me to ship them, I would suggest you buy more than that because the shipping, you can't control that shipping cost. I don't pay it. Uh, whoever I sell it to does. Now, I do sell horseshoes. I'll leave it um, in the link here up on the screen pretty soon. I mean, if you run into a situation, part of the money goes towards helping, you know, animals. Um, I'll explain that later. The rest of it comes back to me so I can keep buying horseshoes and I can keep making videos and projects. And I don't make a lot of money off them. My prices are very competitive. Let me change the picture. I want to show you one more photo before we go to questions, answers, and I wrap this up. Okay, again, this is not my picture. This is off of the web. This is that same kind of a bracket. This time it's been cleaned up and it's been made real shiny. Now, this is kind of the way mine looks most of the time for customers because they want some kind of, you know, a color or a finish on there. So I clean them up really good with the wire wheel like you see here. So somebody said, well, can you describe some of the steps? Well, with this steel, you know, the flat steel, you can make that vertical piece come up a little higher so you can drill a hole, and I do. And then I use a countersink bit so then that way when they go to screw this in the wall, the screw actually, you know, sets in and it runs flush. It's just an added touch. It only takes seconds to do. So I do that on the top. I do it on the bottom, just like you see here in the picture. Okay, then I round all of my corners off, whether I'm using a four and a half inch angle grinder with like a 60 grit or an 80 grit you know, flap disc on there, and I round everything off on the tips of, you know, where the flat steel is. Now, you don't really have to do that on the horseshoes. The horseshoes, let's say, are good and cleaned up. You've got your welds done. It's looking like it here, you know, it is here in the picture. What's the next step that I do? Okay, almost 100% of the time that I can think of, I will wipe this down with acetone. So put some gloves on because the acetone will eat through the gloves too, especially if they're like, you know, that latex you know, material, but if you work quickly, you're fine with it. I just don't like using my bare hands when it comes to chemicals and stuff like that. So I get like a shop towel or whatever you have handy, an old rag, an old t-shirt, soak it with acetone, and I wipe these down real well. And I either blow it off or I set it out in the sun for a few minutes. You know, I let the acetone dry up real good. I look it over one more time. And then if I'm going to paint this, Okay, now this is a particular project where I don't put primer on it. There's really no need to. They're just shelf brackets. But then I go ahead and I figure out what the customer wanted. Now the last two that I made, they called it textured bronze. And it was a pretty color. I mean, so, and I went ahead, that's what they wanted. And I did all four of them that way. I boxed them up and I shipped them out. Now you can do this too. And you can make money doing this. Now somebody said you're going to make a lot of money. I don't know. That depends on you and how you advertise. Um, I don't do a lot of strong pushing advertising. I pretty much, I work in a very large place with a lot of people. I keep a lot of pictures on my cell phone. The projects are kind of like, you know, hit and miss. Somebody will order four of these or, you know, they'll order a wine bottle holder or they'll order something else from me. And it, like I've always said, it fuels my hobby. But if you make these, you get behind the learning curve. You're going to get to where you're good at it. You're fast at it. So don't be afraid to get out there and try the first one. If you screw it up, nobody cares, okay? Do it again. These are simple projects, but they are also simple projects that will make you money. Okay, I'm the Home Handyman. This is kind of a quick tip video, but I answered some questions. I had somebody said, hey, can you tell me how you prep your horseshoes, you know, for welding? Okay, so I just explained it. I would do the railroad ties the same way. I do most of my projects the exact same way, um, especially a lot of the steel. I always clean them up. And I use acetone, etc. If you got any other questions, drop it below. I will continue to do these and show you other projects that you know I have on my phone that you can make money on. Leave me a comment below. Tell me if there's something else you know you want me to discuss with you in upcoming videos. I appreciate your help. Give me a thumbs up, especially give me a comment. I just want to know if you like these short videos. Thank you, folks. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. <music>